Community Cats podcast. Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Community Cats podcast. I am your host, Stacey LeBaron. I've been involved helping homeless cats for over 20 years with the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. The goal of this podcast is to expose you to amazing people who are improving the lives of cats. I hope these interviews will help you learn how you can turn your passion for cats into action. Today, we're speaking with Dr. Nels Rasmussen. Dr. Nels is a third-generation chiropractor who has been working with animals since 1978. In February of 2016, he closed his chiropractic office for good and now focuses all of his healing skills on animals and their people. He now works with people whose beloved pet is in pain, sick, or even paralyzed, and nothing they've tried has worked. He helps their pet get to their happy, active life back without drugs or surgery. His business is called Healing Ministry for Animals for two reasons. First, it's illegal in Washington State for a chiropractor to practice chiropractic on animals, and it's considered to be practicing veterinary medicine without a license. Second, What he does now is not chiropractic. It's neuroenergetic balancing, which is a completely non-forceful way of resetting the nerve system and balancing the energy flow in the body. Because there's no manipulation involved and his method looks like a simple laying on of the hands, he's been ordained as a minister in the International Assembly of Spiritual Healers and Earth Stewards so he can minister to the animals. His basic philosophy is that all changes from normal health and mobility to something else, even behavior and personality changes are the result of a perfect response that the body has made to a physical or emotional trauma or stress. To change the condition, you see, you need to change what the body is responding to. And the most important first step is to reset the fight flight system back to the resting mode. The proof of what he does can be seen in the video case studies on his website. Another discovery of Dr. Nels has made is that he can direct people over the phone to do what he would do if he were there and still get amazing results. He now works with clients all over the world to help pets that aren't getting help anywhere else. Dr. Nels, I'd like to welcome you to the show. Well, thank you very much, Stacy. This is a fascinating topic. It's it's very interesting to me, near and dear to my heart, as I have uh, a soft spot for fostering older kitties. Kitties usually ten and up, and I did have a kitty named Spooky, who had uh, quite a bad situation where she had a hard time walking around with her back legs. And I think this sounds just absolutely uh, fascinating. But I first wanted to find out from you, how did you get interested in in helping animals and your your passion for doing this healing work? Right. Well, I was uh, probably about eight years old when I first saw my dad, who was a chiropractor. Both my parents were chiropractors. And I saw my dad uh, do some adjustments on a paralyzed dachshund. Now, at the time, I uh, let's put it this way. When I was a kid, I saw things like auras and acupuncture meridians. And so I was watching him work, and I could see that he was not working in a spot that would get results. <laughs> but h- how, do you, how do you tell your dad that when you're eight years old? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, I was fascinated by the fact that he was even trying. And uh, I thought, you know, I think I would like to do that someday. And I thought I would be able to do a pretty good job. But you went through chiropractor school. So you did actually do work on people first, and then you left that practice to, to come in and help with the animals. Right. I, uh, I did graduate from chiropractic college back in 1979. And I had my uh, girlfriend, soon to be wife, was living with me and we had uh, her English pointers. And they would uh, they would play chicken and run into each other and cause themselves harm. And I found that I could adjust them. So they were actually my first test subjects, even before I was working with people, uh, I was working with our dogs. And so I got I got my hands dirty, you might say, right away with the animals. Mm-hmm. And I, I've never looked back. I've always worked with animals. That's fantastic. Do you find most of your, I guess your subjects are or your clients are, are dogs? Or is it a combination between dogs and cats? And and do you do other animals too, like horses and, and you know? Yeah, I um, 
when I first started out, I, I worked on my dogs. I didn't have any other dog patients. And then I got a contact from a, a person who talked to another chiropractor and they said, well, Dr. Rasmussen, he's got a farm. Maybe, maybe he uh, would be able to do something for this horse you've got that's got a problem. They contacted me and I thought, well, you know, horse, just like a big dog. So <laughs> I, went, <laughs> I went over and I adjusted the horse uh, and it got fantastic results. This horse that was unrideable was rideable the next day. And uh, very quickly, I had a, a pretty good size horse practice. And that continued on for probably 15 years where horses were my number one animal. And then gradually people found out, oh, you can do this for cats and dogs too. And uh, horses have now kind of dwindled into the background. And I do mostly dogs and some cats and some horses. And the cats that you see, what is their situation? Is it primarily they were either born with a like a spinal defect or they've been hit by a car or is it for other issues? Yes. Well, let me tell you about the first cat that I worked on because that kind of illustrates at least some of what happens. This cat, I got a call. Actually, what was interesting was I was referred, this woman was referred to me by her veterinarian, a mobile vet up in the Bellingham, Washington area. So they had they had sent this woman to me because their cat had become paralyzed after it, it had been neutered. Hmm. And it was dragging itself around the house with its claws in the carpet and couldn't use its back legs at all. So I went to the home and did an adjustment at that time. That's what I was doing was physical adjustments. And so I adjusted the cat. I found that the problem was nowhere near the low back. In fact, it was the very top bone in the neck. How it had got screwed up because of the neuter operation, I have no idea. (laughs) But but I I uh, reconnected that, you might say. I put things right. And then within a matter of days, the cat was running around just like normal, able to jump up on the counters again. And I guess you could say that's when my practice of helping paralyzed animals was born. So let's talk about the specifics since we are on iTunes and uh, not visually oriented. What exactly are you doing with, let's say, a cat when you are working with a cat and say you're there, you know, in person and you're actually able to, to see the cat? What are you doing to help that cat? All right. So what I do is I put my uh, I put my hands on the cat and I feel along the spine and uh, really the rest of the body, just feeling for areas first of tension and uh, sometimes there's things that feel like a bone is sticking out of place kind of thing. But often it's more subtle than that. I feel a stickiness in the fur, which is pretty interesting. My fingers can pick that up. And also the watch for the body response as I'm lightly stroking the animal, does it get all twitchy in certain spots? And so that's actually a really good test people can do if they have a cat with a problem to stroke along its spine. And if it's consistently twitchy in some area, that's a sign that that animal has a a blockage in their nerve system and needs some help. Hmm. Interesting. And then at this point, we're doing, you're doing energy work. Right. So you're just, you are just guiding your hand sort of along the spine. And then if you hit an area that you feel is, I don't know, sometimes people have said like hot spots, are there like hot spots or something? And then you, you stay in that area or am I misunderstanding the process? Right. Well, the process is really boring, <laughs> as a matter of fact. If, you know, this is, it's good we're on radio because to watch me do this is like a total sleeper. <laughs> but what I do is I, I find an area that has the stickiness to the fur, the tension underneath, uh, sensitivity if the animal twitches, all of those things. Uh, I find uh, usually a primary area somewhere in the neck. And uh, I rest a finger lightly on that point. And then I find another one lower down in the spine, anywhere from around the scapula all the way to the tail. And uh, I simply hold contacts on those two points and wait usually a minute or two or sometimes even three until there's a strong pulsation in both fingers. And that that, uh, tells me that we've accomplished the uh, neuroenergetic balancing And it's time to look and see if there's any more of those points. And usually with most animals, there's at least 
two of those sets of points. And in an animal with serious problems like paralysis, I usually find a half a dozen pairs of points. I mean, there's so many different components in this. I mean, I've done acupuncture with my cat, my cat Spooky that I mentioned earlier. So I, sh- I would take her to a veterinarian and we would do all the needles and everything to help try and relieve some of the, the pain that she was in and also to help with the mobility. It, it sounds like they're just, there's so many different components. Being sort of a lay person or just a loving cat owner, how do we choose what direction to go in? Yeah, well, that's a good question, and I'm not sure I can give you the greatest answer, but uh, here's what I find, and that is you need to go, first of all, with, I would say, the practitioner, the person who has the experience to know where to work, because uh, when I work with an animal, it's purely based on what I find through my sense of touch or even my sensitivity like I do this work all over the world so I can connect actually over the phone and find these same areas energetically. And so you need somebody who has the ability to find the right place to do the work. And not everybody who's able to wield an acupuncture needle, for example, can put it in the right place. There are those that that do and those that are just following a cookbook. You definitely want to find somebody who is well known for their expertise. So that's probably more important than anything else is, are the people you're working with really good at what they do? Because they're the ones who are going to get the results, the ones who who have a, a knowingness about what they do. And after almost 40 years, I'm one of those people. <laughs> right, right. You have all the experience. You had talked a little bit. You just mentioned that you work with people from all around the world. You're able to Skype with them and able to educate them, show them sort of what you do so that then they can help their own animals. You basically are just sort of guiding them through the process and you're finding that they're able to get results on their own. Right. Yes. I, um, using essentially what I do is I have people send me a picture, uh, and even better a video where I can really watch the animal and what's going on with it. And then I find that having that information, I can tune in and essentially feel like I have the animal in my presence. And it, it probably look, would look strange if we took a video of me doing it, but I'm essentially stroking along the animal as if it was right there with me. And then I'm feeling for those areas of blockage and, and using a you know visualization process. And once I have found the two points that I want to work with, I then guide the person's hands to put their hands right in the same places that I am visualizing. And so what's happening is they're putting sensory information through the brain and spinal cord to help do some re-coordination that way. And then I'm doing the energy work, which anybody who does energy work will tell you, you can do that from anywhere to anywhere. There's no time and space problem there. But, But the sensory input is important for uh, a lot of what needs to happen, especially for a paralyzed animal. And so guiding the hands to do that work uh, is very important. And I've had some really great results with, uh, I recently I had a dog that was 800 miles away that was paralyzed. and I worked on it uh, with the owners and we had amazing results. Five days after the first session, it got up and walked. And wow. uh, yeah, <laughs> and it's been getting better and more active since. So yeah, we, we it, it is so gratifying to be able to even help animals I've never actually personally met. Pop Cats, the celebration of cats meet pop culture, will make its electrifying debut in Miami Saturday, October 28th, 2017 at the Miami Airport Convention Center. The curated show will feature a ridiculously adorable cat lounge, visual artists, inspiring speakers, art installations, and the makers of the most innovative products of the cat universe. PopCat's core mission is to raise awareness about cat welfare efforts by crafting an experience that mixes entertainment with advocacy. A portion of proceeds will benefit the Cat Network, a cat-centric not-for-profit organization with over 20 years of service in South Florida. The convention will welcome an invasion of cat lovers, curious spectators, and pop culture fans to a scene flooded with music and immersive art installations specifically designed to ignite shareable memories. The exhibition floor will also grant visitors the unique opportunity to meet national and international talent that have grasped the fascination of the internet community. Highlights amongst the speakers are fervent rescuer Tumblr's meme librarian Amanda Brennan, 
Lorenzo the Cat photographer Joanne Biondi, and Shark Tank presenter and Apollo's Peak Pet Beverages founder Brandon Zavala. A giant Bubble Cat Lounge will also be a can't-miss feature at PopCats, where attendees will be able to interact freely with an irresistible herd of adoptable cats brought by the Cat Network. For more information and tickets, please go to www.popcatsshow.com. I want to hear from you what the Community Cats Podcast means to you. You can now leave a recorded testimonial on the Community Cats Podcast website and share your thoughts about the show. You can also ask questions, share show ideas, pretty much anything you want. Just go to www.communitycatspodcast.com and click on the testimonial link and record. You hear from me all of the time, and now I want to hear from you. Thank you. Well, I'm just wondering, uh, another animal or another type of cat that I've run into a lot of, maybe not necessarily paralyzed issues, but incontinence issues are Manx cats. I don't know if you've ever run into anything with that. That tends to have something to do with the spinal and the megacolon back there. And I didn't know if that was an, another arena that you've ever worked in. Well, I have helped a lot of animals with incontinence and I'm I'm actually trying to remember, if uh, hands-on, I can't think that I've worked on a cat where their primary reason for seeing me anyway was an incontinence problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the radio show that I get on pretty regularly, we have people call in with all kinds of interesting problems. And I know I've worked on a few cats with some incontinence problems and had good results doing the energy work for the call-in radio show. So yes, we've, we've helped uh, incontinence problems. And uh, bowel problems, like uh, one cat had diarrhea for a couple of months, and after its first session uh, on the radio, it stopped doing that. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes it works uh, amazingly well. Right. One of the things that happens for the folks that listen to our show, many of our, our listeners take care of feral cat colonies. You know, they're out there in the streets feeding cats on a regular basis, Some of those cats, unfortunately, do get injured, they get hit by cars, they get in fights with other animals, and some of them get pretty old. Some of our our feral cat colonies have have older cats, and they're dealing with some old age issues. From your perspective, is there anything that, that you would recommend that we learn or we do to be able to help the cats in our colonies? Wow, that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> well. I, the first thing that comes to mind is: uh, Are these cats? Can you put your hands on them? You know, that's uh, that would be something I would be interested in knowing. Is are the feral cats uh, amenable to being handled, or are they pretty well hands off? Just feed me and leave me alone. Right. Most of them are feed me, leave me alone. But as they get older, or if they get injured, then they're going to get probably trapped. Yeah. So then they get in the trap, then their stress level goes through the roof and, you know, we have to make decisions about treatment, how to, what's their best choice? You know, do they want to be fostered? Do they want to be in a home while they recover or while they hospice as an older cat? It's a very, very tough conversation and decision on the part of the caretaker and trying to communicate the best that we can with the cats to find out what it is that that they would like to have happen too. But even just to try and reduce the stress level, I didn't know if there was anything. I mean, we obviously, we cover the traps and we try and keep them in as quiet a place as possible. But even without physically being able to touch the cats, maybe through the trap, is there anything that we can do from, from that standpoint? Well, that would be uh, you would you, you know you would need to have somebody who was I would say fairly accomplished as an energy healer to be able to do that. Uh, yeah, I I can tell people a couple of points that they can touch on their cat or some cat that doesn't mind being handled that helps to reduce stress and reset the fight or flight system. I found two points on either side of the body that uh, that actually can do that. So, uh, I, and I'd be happy to share that with you if you'd like. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so on uh, the right or left side of the neck, let's just, for the sake of visualization, we'll be on the right side of the body. Uh, On the middle of the neck, halfway between the back of the ear and the front of the shoulder, and fairly far forward towards the throat on the side of the neck, 
you're going to find an area, if you stroke around on a cat that's been stressed or injured, you'll find an area that is probably pretty lumpy in that area, feels prominent. You rest a finger on that area in the middle of the neck, and then the other finger goes down to where the last rib is, right near the spine, and you rest your finger right there at the junction of the last rib and the spine. And then you just hold on to those two points. And while we do use specific fingers when we do this work on a, you know, what I think of as an industrial basis, that's really mostly for us to so that our polarity doesn't get messed up. But for a person who's just doing this on occasion, they can just use any old finger they want <laughs> and put it, put it on those two points, the side of the neck and the place where the rib joins the spine, uh, that last rib. And those seem to reset the fight or flight system if you hold on for a minute or two. And then you can do the opposite pair on the other side, and it will have a calming effect most of the time. Interesting. I was just, can you do it on people too? I was just poking at myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll bet you can. Uh, there are places very similar to that for people, although on, on People, we usually, instead of using the, that last rib area, we're usually doing on the actually the side of the outer th side of the thigh in the area of the hip. There's often a place. And, and it's uh, just as a the reason we do that area on humans is because there's a muscle that stabilizes both the hip and knee joint for running away. So it's part of the fight flight mechanism. And that muscle is called the tensor fascia lata for those massage therapists who are listening. And anyway, that uh, stabilizing that muscle along with the same area I was talking about on the side of the neck uh, seems to have that same sort of uh, reset the system effect. Hmm, interesting. Is that the IT band you're talking about, or is that? Yes. Ab yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I play a lot of tennis, and my husband is a a biker, so we're familiar with the IT band right. conversation quite a bit. It's very sensitive. Yes. So, and my neck, where you were talking to press, my neck is very sensitive where you were talking to about pressing there. Anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you could try that out. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds great. And I mean, stress is something that we all have in terms of taking care of animals too. It's very stressful when we have animals that our cats that need our help. Uh, you know, I can't tell you how much I worried about Spooky when she was having a hard time and dragging her legs around and, you know, she couldn't get into the litter box and all that kind of stuff. And it's stressful because you want to do what you can for the cats and you sometimes don't know what you should do. So, yeah. um, you know, you try a little bit of everything and it's hard to find the right direction. Yeah. Well, and, and the kind of work that I do, if you just start poking points willy-nilly and holding them and that sort of thing, you can actually cause some uh, serious discomfort for an animal. And I learned through my mistakes, you might say, what is safe and what isn't. <laughs> yeah. And the ones that are safe are those two points that I told you about. Those are something anybody can do. Messing around with other points without having good direction or reasons for doing it is it's probably not a good idea. Yep. Yeah, no, definitely. I I would recommend not not going into uncharted territory on your own. That's for sure. Yeah. So, so Dr. Nels, if folks are interested in finding out more about the work that you're doing, how could they find you? And I noticed actually on your website that you are offering a free giveaway. I didn't know if you wanted to share that with our listeners. Yes. On, uh, you go to healingministryforanimals.com. That's healing ministry, and that's a singular, not ministries. So healingministryforanimals.com. And when you get to that homepage, right there at the top, there's a thing about a free report, which is interesting. People can learn more about what I do there by just clicking on the big yellow button and getting the free report. And then just below that, there is a scheduler where people can schedule for a 30 to 45 minute conversation with me. And that's at no charge where we you get a chance to really assess what's going on with your animal. And if it sounds like the kind of thing that I would work on, and then if it does, you know, I could recommend what kind of program would work and how much that would cost. So up to that point, it's free. It's great. And is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners today? 
Well, yeah, you know, the thing is, is a lot of animals get put down unnecessarily because they've, they've got these mobility issues and, you know, they're wobbling or dragging themselves around and the veterinarian has tried something or somebody who's, you know, taken a weekend course in acupuncture has tried something and, and they haven't got results. And what, uh, well, I guess my big message is really there's still hope. Uh, even if nothing you've tried so far has worked, this kind of work, or if you can find a really accomplished acupuncturist who really knows what they're doing, there are people out there like me who can help an animal that's that's got a problem that everybody else is saying, well, there's just no hope anymore. And I'm here to say there is, because I've sure helped a lot of them get better. And the videos on my website show that. And I've got a lot more videos waiting in the wings, but I, I can't get to them. I'm so busy. <laughs> I'm going to have to see if I can find a high school kid to help me put these videos together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's you fill up your YouTube channel and that would be great to see all the testimonials. That'd be fantastic. And I just, I think there's so many different components to treating our cats. And I, I do think that sometimes our shelters give up a little bit too early. Um, our foster homes and even maybe our owners give up a little bit too early on the cats and, you know, I give them a second chance. It sounds like that's what you're saying. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. And there are a couple of cats that are on my uh, on my website. Cats are harder to get video on. I don't know if you notice that, but <laughs> compared to dogs, uh, cats they see the video camera or the phone come out, and they're you know next thing you know, where'd the cat go? <laughs> so yeah, getting a good video on a cat is a challenge. I'm I'm very impressed by anybody who has an amazing YouTube video of of a cat doing anything. <laughs> yeah. That no, well, the uh, kitten lady Hannah Shaw, who's been on our show several oh, yes. times, she's she's got the video down. That's for sure. Yeah, she does. I, I love her work. Yeah, she's doing doing a great job. So, Doctor Nels, I want to thank you so much for agreeing to be a guest on the show, and I really hope we'll have you on in the future. All right. Well, thank you so much, and I would be happy to come back. The Community Cats podcast will soon be a year old with over 200 episodes profiling amazing people who are all making a difference in the lives of community cats. If you would like to support the show but not be a sponsor, feel free to contribute to our efforts by going to www.communitycatspodcast.com and follow the donate link. Help us to continue to provide excellent programming. Ah!